Velisca Axe Murders really is a gem of a true crime case as it contains a lot of mystery, it's still unsolved to this day, there was a ton of suspects, and it's also become a hotspot for paranormal investigators. So let's take a look at what happened. It's the home where eight people were murdered. The case remains unsolved. Now, it's unbelievable the lives of those eight people did not end after they died. The Velisca Axe murders occurred between the evening of June 9th and the early morning of June 10th, 1912, in the town of Velisca, Iowa, in the United States. The six members of the Moore family and two guests were found bludgeoned in the Moore residence. All eight victims, including six children, had severe head wounds from an axe. Now, the Moore family consisted of the parents Josiah and Sarah Moore and their four children, Herman Montgomery, Mary Catherine, Arthur Boyd, and Paul Vernon. On that fateful evening, Mary Catherine Moore had invited two of her friends, uh, Ina and uh, Lena Stillinger, to spend the night at their residence. And the whole Moore family, along with the two visiting sisters, attended the Presbyterian Church that evening for a Children's Day program, which was coordinated by Sarah. Now, the church program ended at around 9.30 p.m. and it's estimated that the Moore family, along with the two Stillinger sisters, arrived back at the Moore residence at around 9.45 to 10 p.m. And this would be the last time that the Moore family, along with Lena and Ina Stillinger, would be seen alive. next morning, the neighbor of the Moors, a lady by the name of Mary Peckham, became increasingly concerned because she had not seen any members of the Moore family to come out to do their morning chores. She went to go investigate, she tried to open the door and it wouldn't open, she knocked on the door but there was no response, and then she phoned Josiah's brother, Ross Moore. When Rossmer arrived, he unlocked the front door with his copy of the key, and while Mary Peckham was standing on the porch, he entered the house and went into the guest bedroom where he found the bloodied bodies of Lena and Isla Stillinger. He then immediately shouted at Peckham to call the primary peace officer at the time in Villisca, Henry Hank Horton, who arrived on the scene soon after. Horton's search of the house revealed that the whole Moore family, along with the Stillinger sisters, had been bludgeoned to death and that the murder weapon was an axe belonging to Josiah, which was found in the guest bedroom where the Stillinger sisters were found. Doctors concluded that the murders took place sometime between midnight and 5 a.m. Room also has it that two spent cigarettes were found up in the attic, which suggests that the killer could have been hiding out there until the Moore residents, as well as the Cylinder kids, were asleep. The killer began in the master bedroom where Josiah and Sarah Moore were sleeping. Josiah's face had been cut to such an extent that his eyes were missing, and the ceiling in his room also had a gouge mark from where the murderer lifted the axe to murder him. It was a full-size axe. And it had to be a powerful person to swing and break skull. It was mean. Strangely enough, the killer used the blade end of the axe only on Sarah while using the blunt end on the rest of the victims. The killer then moved to the room where the Moore's kids were sleeping and they were then subsequently bludgeoned to death in the same manner as their parents had been. Afterwards, the killer returned to the main bedroom to inflict more blows on Josiah Moore before moving downstairs to the guest bedroom to kill Lena and Ina Stillinger. Investigators also believe that all the victims were asleep except for Lena Stillinger as she had a defensive wound on her arm. Lena's nightgown was also pushed up to her waist and she was wearing no undergarments, which led law enforcement to believe that the killer either sexually molested her or attempted to do so. After the murders, the killer apparently set up some sort of ritual as all the victims' faces were covered in sheets or clothing or towels or, or what have you. And um, he also then went from room to room and covered all the windows and all the mirrors with sheets, clothing, towels. And uh, at some point, he went into the fridge and removed two to four pounds of uncooked bacon which was found in the living room, along with a bowl of what appeared to be bloody water, which was assumed that the killer was washing his hands after the murders took place. 
By the time the police, coroners and doctors were done with the crime scene, officials cautioned townspeople about going inside the home. But as soon as the premises was clear, at least 100 townspeople gave in to their gross fascinations and traipsed through the blood spattered home. It was also reported that one of the townspeople took a fragment of Joe's skull as a keepsake, which is pretty fucking weird, but you know, each to his own. The Villisca Axe murders yielded a number of suspects, and one of them was Frank Jones, who was an Iowa state senator. Josiah Moore had worked for Frank Jones before opening up his own rival implement store, and he apparently took away quite a bit of business from Frank Jones, including a very successful John Deere dealership. It was also rumored that Josiah had an affair with Jones's daughter-in-law, although there's never been any evidence to support this. Now, the townspeople insisted that there was a deep hatred between the Joneses and the Moors, but not enough to spark murder. Another theory is that Senator Jones hired a man named William Blackie Mansfield to murder the Moore family. Payroll records, however, provided an alibi which placed Mansfield in Illinois at the time the Villisca murders took place. Another suspect was Henry Lee Moore, who was not related to the Moore family, and he was convicted of killing his mother and grandmother months after the Villisca murders took place, with his weapon of choice being an axe. And although there were a lot of similarities between these murders, he had an alibi and was discarded as a suspect. Now, every transient and unaccounted for stranger was basically a suspect in this case. And one of these people was a guy by the name of Andrew Sawyer. Now, Andrew Sawyer was reportedly obsessed with the Villisca murders. And he also reportedly slept fully clothed as, he, as if he was you know, ready to make a clean getaway. And um, he also slept with an ax next to his bed. Now, apparently Sawyer was detained, but he was ultimately let go when it was discovered that he was arrested for vagrancy in Osceola, Iowa at the time the Villisca murders took place. Probably one of the most intriguing suspects was Reverend George Kelly, who was an English immigrant who had a history of sexual deviancy and mental problems. Kelly became the perfect suspect for police because he was left-handed and through blood spatter analysis, the police believe that the killer must have been left-handed as well. And um, a dry cleaner in a nearby town also stated that Kelly dropped off some bloody clothes days after the Villisca murders took place. And um, Kelly also gained access to the house after the crime by posing as a Scotland Yard officer. He had also reportedly left town hours before the bodies were discovered. And the police actually arrested Kelly in 1917 for the Villisca murders and even obtained a confession from him, which he later recanted um, because it was a long interrogation and apparently there was police brutality involved. He also showed up to court with bruises on his face. And after two separate trials, he was acquitted. More recently, in the 2017 book, The Man from the Train, author Bill James and his daughter, Rachel McCarthy James, discussed the Valeska murders as part of a series of murders which they believed were conducted by a single serial killer named Paul Mueller, who was an immigrant, quite possibly from Germany. And he was the sole suspect in a year-long manhunt for the 1897 murders of a family in West Brookfield, Massachusetts, who hired him as a farmhand. In conclusion, even with all of these suspects, the Villisca Axe murders still remains a mystery and it still remains unsolved to this day. And as mentioned before, it has become a bit of a hotspot for paranormal investigators and just people in general who are fascinated with the case. Now, apparently you can visit the house and you can even stay overnight. And it really has become one of the greatest murder mysteries of our time. The bloody ax murders that took place in the Moore house in Villisca, Iowa has been a favorite Midwestern ghost story for a number of years.